Hi, welcome to another video. So this is where Microelectronica's Easy Pick Fusion Version 7 meets a Mackie SRM450 version 1. So this is a Class B amplifier, good old proper Class B. Uh, proper droidal transformer, should last forever. This was made in the USA, so this might last forever, sort of 50 years plus. Uh, the version 2 obviously got a switch mode power supply. So on the left hand side this is the base. I shouldn't be touching this with a pencil for the newbies out there if that lead conducts electricity but anyway this is the base this is the treble this base was blown up someone else had looked at it before I, th I understand he may have changed one of the, these drivers not sure but in any event these outside two are FETs and all these inside ones NPN and PNP silicon transistors two resistors blown up one down there and one there, that's a 68 ohm. That should be a 33 ohm. Didn't have any 33s, so I got two 68s, put them in parallel. That'll give me 34 ohms, put that in there. Job done. So, if you're not familiar with the Class B amplifier, this half of the circuit amplifies the positive going part of the signal, and this half amplifies the negative. Presumably it's the same down here on the treble. This one's a, a temperature sensor and two 15 volt regulators down here. Right, if you're new to sort of Mackie version ones, what I recommend if your base is gone or treble, take the board off the heatsink, take off, take off, yeah, whether it's the base or the treble, take off all the transistors, unsolder them, test them with a, a transistor tester. All these little brown resistors. They're actually flame-proof resistors. They're sort of 2.2, 22, 33, 68 ohms. And they're actually designed to, to sort of blow up should one of these transistors go short circuit. So in this case, this output driver, or well, these two transistors drive these two FETs. These two went short circuit and took out two resistors. As I say, that's 33 ohm, that's a 68. You can put your multimeter on these resistors in the circuit and see if they're open circuit or not. Yeah, as I say, take these out so you don't get any tough readings. Just test them all, replace any faulty ones and put them back. It's quite easy, assuming you've got the signal to this end of the board. So you might be thinking, using this analog devices frequency generator, incidentally I've got my SMA to BNC connector, it's a bit elaborate testing one of these amps with this frequency generator. I mean, my oscilloscope's got the uh, WaveGen software and I did pay hundreds of pounds for it, but I have to sit there and turn the frequency up. This program of Microelectronica software, and hopefully you can see on the screen, it's actually still counting, it's up at 21 kilohertz at the moment. So why should I bother testing one of these Mackies with this? Well, I'll show you why. Incidentally, I'm full of cold, so if I sound bunged up, you'll have to forgive me. This is a screen capture, Cap captured, uh, I don't know, Christmas or something. This is a Mackie SRM 450 version 2, and you can see it amplifies the bottom end. This is 30 hertz, and then drops off 120 hertz. Someone gave me a Mackie version 1 Christmas, there was no sound, just a little jumper had come off, stuck the jumper on him, charged a very little amount of money. I thought, oh great, do a comparison while I've got it. And I thought, right, that looks all right doesn't amplify the bottom end as much as the version 2 but that's where I was wrong that version 1 which I gave back to the customer you know sort of just had it for a couple of hours doing this frequency sweep highlights faults in the frequency response the version 1's should match the version 2 so I thought the version 1 wasn't as good as the version 2 but putting this current version 1 on my sweep test which hasn't got a faulty circuit, I know if the response was like this, it would be faulty. And I will show you the response, it's identical to this. This is just the base. That sort of 30 hertz, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, so on and so forth. So that's why I bother to do a sweep test. Well, I'll give you some technical advice. On the version 1s and version 2s, there's a voltage controlled amplifier at the front end. There's three op amps do the base amplification. So B1, 
boost this bottom end. The output of those three amplifiers that boost this bottom end feed a voltage controlled amplifier. The more voltage to the amplifier the higher the output. And what happens if you lose one of your supplies plus or minus 15 that chip is now obsolete, that chip fails and actually blows up a resistor or partly blows up a resistor which feeds the voltage controlled amplifier. And when that happens you get the wrong response. So by itself, yes, healthy speaker you think, but no, it should sound better. And that voltage controlled amplifier is this long one down there. As I say, that is now obsolete. They've changed to a different type on the revision H on the version 2s. But as I say, if you lose one of your supplies, they go they go faulty. Plus or minus 15, yeah, lose one of your supplies, which is quite common on version 1, version 2. That blows up and takes out a little resistor down here somewhere. So that voltage controlled amplifier is responsible for giving you a duff frequency response. So that's why I test it with a sweep test. So again, using my trusty Keysight oscilloscope, set the horizontal time base to 20 seconds per division. And that way, when it's sweeping through the frequencies, I can compare the bottom end to, to, to the top end. If you just you know, run your scope, you'd have to look closely at the amplitude, but you know, recording it over sort of, uh, what's it, 90 second period or whatever it is, I can see the exact frequency response of the bass and start to see the treble come up. So that's now ready, so I'll turn my PIC microcontroller on. And it starts at 30 hertz, 40, 50, 60. And as I've said before in a previous video, any of these little lines of the communication with the analog devices breaking through. The amplifier can amplify those frequencies greater than the others. So none of the switches are pressed in. You've got the bass cut, which would cut this off, and you've got the middle switch, which amplifies sort of the bottom and the top end. So you get the general idea. That's gonna go up to so 900 hertz and then start dropping off over a thousand. If you can see this with the light, I now set the TFT up to record the frequency. That's at 820 hertz at the moment. That's what, well, it's at 900 now. And that's common with all the amplifiers. They seem to come up 900 and then drop off again near a thousand. And you can see there the treble is starting to come up. So with my experience with the voltage controlled amplifiers, I know that frequency response is now correct. A version one should look like that as well as a version two. If it doesn't, you've got a problem at the front end somewhere. So that was 900 Hertz round about here. We're now at 1400 Hertz and that's now finished. But what I can do, turn this off, reset the scope, if I wanted to look at the treble, I could just capture it again, leave the uh, chip running, leave the pick microcontroller running and just capture it again. But I'm not going to, I'm going to show you the difference between the bass cut and the band amplification. Right, so when this scope is ready, that trigger will start flashing. I'll turn the amplifier on in normal mode, then I'll press the middle switch which boosts the bottom to mid range, boosts the whole lot, then I'll press the bass cut. Leave the scope running all the time and I'll just turn my pick microcontroller on and off. Right, so that's ready. This is standard mode. So I've had to turn the amplifier down to get the boost signal within this screen. I think it uh, more than doubles the output. So it, twice the power, that's plus 3 dB. Well, so you get the idea, that's a normal bass response and it will look like a bell once it gets up to 1 kilohertz. Now I'll turn my microcontroller off, leaving this scope run. Now I'll 
press that band amplification does the bottom end and the mid range turn my chip back on I haven't measured the voltage actually I've got 61 peak to peak there but I haven't measured it but you can see that's probably double the output so twice the power that's plus T uh, that's plus 3 dB gain or this is minus 3 dB compared to that if it's double so that's the middle switch that's the band amplification amplifies the bottom end and the rest now I'll turn my chip off now I'll turn the band amplification off and I'll press the bass cut and we'll see what it looks like and this is the bass cut so what's that is that not quite half of that but you can see that bottom end looks totally different so that is actually less than half of that but you can see so those individual chips and that voltage controlled amplifier is doing its job that's 420 Hertz at the moment as I say bass cut band amplification on and that's standard so you get totally different sound pressing those switches and that's finished at 770 Hertz so hopefully that gives you an idea of the bass uh, 770 Hertz not a uh, high enough frequency for the treble to start working I can yeah I could test that if I wanted to but I already did it last night but just gives you a rough idea yes you can fix these with a multimeter you can get sound put them into a speaker see if it's right when these resistors were gone maybe I'll turn it off when these resistors are gone the top half of the waveform wasn't being amplified, it was sort of clipping uh, but the bottom half was being amplified lovely which was this this side so that's a negative half so these are like sort of PNP &P and a P channel MOSFET these are NPN and an N channel MOSFET uh, not looked at these today, I did actually test it this is all the horn, as I say, fiddling rope regulators, temperature and I ran this into a 4 ohm 200 watt resistor last night cooked this until the temperature light came on let it cool down for a few seconds it was still fine good old fashioned V1 if you've got trouble with your frequency response yeah have a look at this voltage controlled amplifier they're now obsolete people in this country are charging sort of 20-30 pound for this sort of 50 pence amplifier you can get them from China for Fiverr or a company in the States Cool Audio and they are making an equivalent but a little note if you lose one of your supplies plus or minus 15 it will still blow up so at least they're replacing it so you can keep these amps going but that's maybe why Mackie changed the design on the uh, version 2 this chip is no longer available so yeah do some research if you're repairing these Mackies get one of those in in case you need it a couple of dollars from the states so that's a brief rundown of the Mackie SRM450 version 1 solid reliable amplifiers and as I say that's my analog devices sort of frequency generator SMA to BNC cable running into the amp and I've now got the TFT showing the frequency incidentally if you want to get into PIC programming I do recommend microelectronics software um, and the Easy PIC Fusion version 7 board this is 32-bit microcontroller, nothing wrong with starting with a top microcontroller 
don't necessarily have to start with an 8-bit. This software is actually free to use if you've just got a small bit of code. You can sort of trial, trial out the software. If you want to add this TFT to this simple little project, this TFT does require registration. To run this TFT is more code, and said, so right, now you need to buy it. So if you fancy having a look at Microelectronica software, download their free sample software, have a go. If you need more complex stuff, you can decide whether you want to buy it or not. Hopefully this has helped. Thank you very much.